Really appreciate you all joining us for the California Placement Association's webinar. Perfect. Hi, oh, Anthony Sharp. Good to see you. Um, I'm going to have real fast any CPA members that are on, if you do a quick introduction. Um, so my name is Greg Friedman. I'm with Merced County Office of Education. I'm a job developer. I work with our adult ROP programs. I'm also, I think, either education or employer representative for the Northern region. Denise, I'll let you go first because I see you. Hey, uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Denise Crawford. I, I work at Bakersfield College. I'm a, a program manager for workability. I'm past president of CPA and um, and I know that Greg's probably going to talk about our conference coming up in April, but I just want to give a plug for that. So um, I don't get commission or anything, <laughs> but you guys don't want to miss it. So it's nice to see everybody on here. And Denise is hiring right now too. She's looking for a job developer. The I am good job, face, job so. development specialist. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. KCCD.edu website. There you go. We're, see, we're workforce development. We're promoting. Um, do we have other board? Do we have other members here besides Sergio? Perfect. All right. Where do you going? I want to introduce Sergio. I'm going to blow Baez. Yeah. yeah. Like Joan Baez. That works. Okay. <laughs> so Sergio, Sergio is a CPA member as well. Been with us for a year or two. He has over 15 years experience working for a Fortune, we'll say 500 company, but 50 company, 10 company, a huge name in the entertainment industry. And now he left the security of corporate America and he's becoming a prof an adjunct professor and colleges yeah. from down south. Um, so he knows marketing, branding. I'm sure he can speak about that, um, his past history, but he is well, well qualified to talk to all of us today about our own personal brand, which is so important. I know when we teach our, cell, our students, we're always talking about that elevator pitch. Oh yes, please everybody in the chat, please put your name, where you work, where you're from, your region. We'd love to get all that. And with that, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna pin spotlight you for everyone, Sergio. And I'm oh, going wow, that's, to- Oh uh, wow, that's, that's a jumbo Sergio head, so. It is, and you <laughs> I haven't seen my head that big in a Zoom call before. <laughs> but, uh, but thank you all. I always like to just, I've been teaching quite a bit. Um, it's still spotlighting my spotlighting me, right? You okay, are, I, and you, you are all now co-host as well. Yep. Perfect, perfect. And so I'm, I've am i also opened up my window so I can see all your lovely faces. So um, I say this to my students all the time is, um, is if you're able uh, to show your your wonderful faces, it's a, it makes it a lot easier to speak to faces than to black boxes. Uh, and given that this is a personal brand presentation or workshop, what I like to call it, uh, it's helpful to, to understand that there's real life uh, humans behind the, the Zoom calls here. So thank you for the, the great introduction. I, what I really want this to be is a dialogue. I really want this to be a conversation. Uh, a little bit about myself um, to uh, Greg's introduction. Again, thank you for that wonderful introduction. I've been with um, the Walt Disney Company for the past going on 16 years. Uh, and throughout my journey, I've learned a lot. And before then, I also worked with Kraft Foods, more on the manufacturing side in a sales and promotion type of role. But within kind of this journey, I've always had a huge passion to help others. Um, and that's what led me to a lot of mentorship Um opportunities. I've guest lectured and now I'm an adjunct faculty member teaching marketing and, and doing kind of this exercise that I'm going to be doing with you all uh, with a lot of my students because a uh, personal brand is such an important uh, skill that uh, isn't really taught in many in many classrooms. And so I, I definitely want you to all start thinking about it if you haven't started thinking about it now. Um, I do teach marketing and branding um, at uh, a few universities, one of which is Cal State LA, Cal State Long Beach. I also teach in the kind of the uh, private university uh, side of things with Loyola Marymount uh, and Pasadena City College as well. So uh, I have a huge passion to, uh, I'm actually teaching over two, 300 students this semester, which is um, what I call myself a bit of a road scholar. Uh, that's kind of the term I guess they use for us. Uh, for the adjuncts kind of traveling from one place to another. So I'm going to share my screen because I know we don't have much time. So I want you to step into this with a few ground rules that I'm going to, and I'm always available should you want to chat afterward. I'm happy to share 
my experience uh, or any type of suggestions or even use me as a soundboard for anything that uh, you want to discuss after. So uh, I'll include that contact info towards the end of my presentation. Can you all see that? No, you probably can't because I need to share my screen. Hold on. While we're waiting for him, if you enjoy Sergio today and you want more of this great content, I just threw the webinar link. There we go for getting there. Um, that's to register for our next webinars. And if you ever want to present, you're like, oh, I can do what Sergio can do. We're almost as good as he can. Um, no, I'm an expert on something. We'd love to have you present. Um, we're doing this every two weeks. So might be three weeks because we're having some trouble finding people that are willing to step up and practice their public speaking. But all right, Sergio's there. I'm going to be quiet. Yeah, no, please chime in. Again, this is a dialogue. I want you all to step in for sure. So feel free to use. And I, 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 if I can lean on my fellow CPA members here, um, to come help me monitor the chat. If there's any questions, again, I want this to be a dialogue. It's going to require you to kind of maybe pick up a pencil or two and kind of start writing some of these things down. Um, and so just, just uh, let me go back here. All right. So personal brand, we'll talk about what that means. A lot of people have heard about the term, but haven't um, given, have, they don't know much about it and kind of what it means and, and how you show up in the world. So again, uh, it's really important as you network, as you move up in your, your, your careers as you um, help others, you know, it's really important to, to really understand kind of what, how you show up in the world and how you can help others is also a, a way of how I use my personal brand. So I consider this more of a self-discovery session for you all. I mean, the, the success for me, what it looks like is having you all start thinking about your personal brand. If you haven't thought of, about it already or making you think about it in a different manner. So that's what success uh, for me looks like uh, at the end of this hour. So I always like to lay out, uh, I think I learned this from my legal team at Disney to put some caveats here. So there's so many ways to explore your personal brand and how you show up in the world. I'm only presenting some ways to get there. So like everybody has their own way of getting to their, you know, who they are as an individual, as a professional, as, you know, personally, I'm only going to assist with maybe inspiring you on a, a few methods or a few ways you can do that. Uh, and my goal is to assist you to begin or reassess your personal brand and help inspire um, and, and, and pressure test your current way of thinking about your personal brand. Uh, so, but at the end of the day, uh, it's, it, there's many ways to get to the finish line. Uh, you make it your own. So these are my workshop um, amount you know, the clock is ticking already here. So I'll have to kind of speed up as, and I'll probably have to tweak some of the timing here because we want to make sure we get this all uh, done and, and checked off the list here before our time together. And I also want to leave some room for questions if that, that, uh, that if time allows. So my workshop objective today is to really talk about what a personal brand is really. And why is it important? Why is it important to really care about this? We'll talk about a little bit of how you start thinking about it. So whether it be a brand slogan, kind of forcing you to start thinking about um, your value system and kind of what, what's your North Star as an individual. Um, then we'll go into first impressions. Why is it so important to have a, a good first impression? A lot of this can translate to a lot of the, the folks that are within our community of folks you know, um, you know, interviews and such, like, why is it such a, a, a and then now with Zoom, right? So how does the, how does the, the first impression, how has that involved, evolved with the world of Zoom uh, as folks are interviewing more and more with, with uh, kind of virtually, right? And then how do you create a good first impression? And last but not least, one of the things at least I want you all to start thinking about is your elevator speech and how do you how do you start creating that if you don't have that already and it's it's not it's not meaning that you should walk around with an index card uh, everywhere you go but it's it's really kind of figuring out uh, what your personal brand is and how do you convey that and how do you tweak that based on the audience you're talking to. So these are my my house world rules here. Uh, I won't go into too much depth here is you'll, what you need is some paper to write on and something to write with. Uh, I, I, again, this is not me talking to you all only. I want there to be engagement. Again, with, with the time that we have, we'll, we'll try to keep it brief, but we'll keep it a, a bit speedy here uh, and be vocal, open-minded. 
you know, really dig deep uh, and put yourself in that vulnerable spot. Um, it's sometimes important for us to really dig deep and feel a little uncomfortable uh, with the exercise. Cause a lot of times, a lot of us don't, aren't, aren't really comfortable with, with uh, talking about ourselves. I think it's such an important tool. Like, so get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. And then what the time you put into it, uh, it or kind of what the energy and the, the uh, brain power you put into this, the more you will get out of it. And then the last but not least is have fun. So that's always my mantra for everything I do. Any questions about any of that? All right, great. All right, so this is, I do have a little prompt there where you see those, those speak bubbles there. That means I need you all to either use the chat or use, you know, raise your hand or vocally just, I'm all about uh, having you all speak up. Um, so have you all tried Googling yourself? You know, feel free to kind of use a thumbs up uh, uh, or a yes, yes. So companies are now, believe it or not, monetizing, cleaning up your internet reputation. We all have it. You know, unfortunately, if you have somebody with your same name that has committed crimes or, I mean, that's unfortunate. I have kind of a, a interesting story. My brother and my dad have the same name. My brother, my dad uh, has pristine credit, um, but my brother is a little more, uh, let's just say, not as careful with his, with his credit. So there was definitely some overlap and uh, just, just, it gets really messy, right? So, uh, and companies are starting to do this more and more. Me as a hiring manager at the Walt Disney company, we Google, I mean, that's kind of the, you know, it's at your, it's at your fingertips, whether it be social media, whether it be, you know, kind of your own version of a background check. So it's really important to, to be in tune with how you Google, you know, how you show up on the internet. And cause it's pretty much, you know, the public domain, anybody can go on. So my first question to you all is, why are individuals worried about how they show up on the internet? Like, just give me some, feel free to shout out or use the chat and I'll ask um, the, the, my, my uh, Denise and Greg to help me out with any, any uh, chat responses. So yeah, that's my first question to you all. Why are individuals worried about how they show up? I think it's first presentable, positive, um, at least to be shown presentable and positive. Because if you want your yeah. self on the internet, you don't want to be bad. Yeah, exactly. And then people make first, this all goes to first impressions, like the, the perception of an individual, that's to do their first impression. Even, and I tell my students this all the time, is that even having a picture that's a little, uh, we can we have our own version of, or definition of controversial, but even kind of an internet profile pic uh, on a social media page can make, um, it can make a difference. So perception is reality. That's it, whether it's um, true or not, the, how people perceive you is what they think is real. So that's kind of a, it's kind of a interesting concept to kind of wrap your head around when you think about it in kind of a, in practice. So I just wanted to make some quotes with, uh, with, with this in mind from, um, Gary Vaynerchuk, who's an entrepreneur, is your personal brand is your reputation. So, and your your, your reputation in, in uh, perpetuity is the foundation of your career. So, essentially, your reputation goes along with you uh, uh, wherever you go, especially in your career. So, do you all agree with that, or yes or no? Uh, and this whole notion of perception is reality. It's not yes, fair yeah. sometimes, right? So, yeah. So, definitely, that is. That is something. So uh, another another quote I like to use all the time is Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, is famously quoting uh, as saying, "Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So your identifiers, you know, what do people say about you? What is that buzz? What we call it at Disney is your buzz. Like you always should always know what your buzz is so that you can course correct uh, along the way. And I won't go into some of these prompts because uh, I definitely want to save some time for some exercises that we have. So what do you all think a personal brand is? So it, we talked about perception, so how others perceive you, but it's it's so multifaceted. And it's and now with the internet and I I brought it up, you know, is social media now plays into account. So how do you present yourself not only physically but non-verbally and through social media? But it also means what you bring to the table with your skills, your experiences, what makes you unique? Um, 
typically, you know, even from a physical perspective, I, I always ask my friends and my network, like, what, what are my identifiers? Well, I'm the bald Mexican guy who works at Disney, right? So you should always be very much in tune with that because that's all part of your brand, right? So, um, and your values, your beliefs, like all that should be part of your brand and what you believe in. So, and how do you show up to that? Your physical appearance, your choice of your your, your choice of clothing, your personality, and this is uh, something that my mom and dad had always instilled in me. You know, as I was growing up, there's a saying in Spanish that that says, "Tell me who you hang out with, and I'll tell you who you are." So, uh, also understanding your network. Uh, another really great quote that I I, I uh, that made me think quite a bit is, "You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with." which was a kind of an interesting thing. I'm like, wait a minute, like, let's think through this. And so maybe that there's some kind of reassessment of like, okay, maybe I should think about who I, who I hang out with. Right. So um, we have maybe different circles as well that, that uh, we, we surround ourselves with and never be the smartest person in the room. Cause you always want to aspire um, to, to, uh, to be in another role or to, to grow as an individual. So for me, just learning and being curious is such an important factor for my personal brand. So how do we start? So I always like to start off with this foundational tool. This is a Japanese concept that has given me so much direction and I am giving you the gift of Ikigai, not that I've invented it, but more of the visibility to it. It's where I started um, when I went on this journey of self-discovery or kind of the reassessment of, of who I was as an individual. It's again, a Japanese concept, which is taking these four quadrants of doing what you love, doing what the world needs, doing what gets paid, what you get paid for, and then doing what you're good at. So those quadrants, in this case, you know, these, these um, circles will then overlap. And if you bring all those together, you will find your ikigai, which is your reason for being or your purpose in life. So I have, I'm happy to have a conversation and it was a, like a really long journey for me to go through this in very, in, in, in length, you know, and it was kind of like really digging deep. And we talk about putting yourself in a very vulnerable spot. This is what I did. So, um, and that, and then it creates different things. So if you have doing what you love and doing what the world needs, you, you have a mission and then so on and so forth. So there's different, you know, as things overlap, they create um, different identifiers, but in the middle, when they overlap all together, that's where you, where you kind of find your Ikigai. So for me, just, and just to give you an example of what that looks like is that I love to teach. I love to mentor, but I also love business development. And so is there a way to kind of, kind of fuse in the two you know, and that's led me to potentially doing things like learning and development, maybe for a large organization at Disney. And so, um, so I'm still kind of figuring that out. And again, this is not a, you do it once and that's it. It's something that you reassess based on the environment, kind of your situation. So again, you start there. First and foremost, you figure out your purpose in life. Once you do that, um, you check that box. How do you build a personal brand? So uh, well, it's through LinkedIn. It's through Facebook. LinkedIn is such a wonderful tool. If you haven't used it, I, I'm hoping everybody on this call uh, uh, and Zoom session has at least dabbled in it. It is such a wonderful tool. I encourage you all to do that. It's your kind of your visual um, resume on the internet. I've developed a lot of relationships through through uh, LinkedIn, and it's been a, a huge gift if you use it right and making sure that your personal brand shows up the way it needs to. Um, another thing that I that I encourage, depending on the industry, but I also um, encourage anybody who has time and and capability, is to create a personal website. How do you dimensionalize yourself? It's similar to like you're all brands, so a lot of brands have their own website. So why is it that you don't have yours? So there's now so many different tools, so many different templates that you can use that, um, that you can create your own. So uh, there's some, some, some research that says that 98% of employers research candidates um, and with 80% of human resource professionals saying that a candidate's personal website really uh, 
influenced or factored into their, 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 their evaluation. So again, setting yourself apart um, from the rest of the, the candidate pool, these are good ways to not only enhance your personal brand, but also to enhance your chances to get in front of the line for a potential role. Um, how, how else do you build your personal brand? How do you physically show up? How do you present yourself visually, vocally? Um, you know, if public speaking isn't something that you're good at, you know, could you join maybe a Toastmasters, uh, blogs, uh, people do podcasts, and then most importantly, your network, surrounding yourself with people that you want to aspire to be in. Um, and that's, you know, a lot of what I do is, you know, a lot of the opportunities that have opened up for me have been through networking and using tools like LinkedIn to help me with that. Any questions? Um, I don't know, Greg or Denise, if you had, I, 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 I can't see the chat. And so if you want to, there's anything nope. that's okay. So far, you're good. Everyone is agreeing a hundred percent with what you're doing. We okay. love that concept of yeah. the last graphic. I'm not going to pronounce it, but yeah, if you have guys have questions, feel free to throw them in there anytime um, or per, direct message them to me. If you wanted a private one, I'll be happy to answer them for you. Great. Thank you, Greg. All right. So so um, we won't go through again, just in, in for, for time's sake here, we won't go through all these engagement prompts, but you know, just a few facts to share. According to Forbes magazine, actually in 2018, Career Builder found that 70% of employers research candidates online and what they found influenced whether the candidate moved forward. So again, going back to my topic of they're doing it already. So you need, just need to be cognizant of it. And as a, a potential employee or as someone that's looking to build their network, you always want to make sure that your buzz, what we call your buzz is accurately represented out there. 43% of employers use social media to check on current employees as well. I've heard even unfortunately of situations where employers have terminated employees because of what they saw on social media. So there's also kind of a, you can have a recruitment effort, but there's also a retention effort or, or can be impacted as well. If you see um, malicious behavior or uh, non-ethical behavior online, it also is a credibility enhancer. It gives you credibility to kind of show up the way you need to show up and it builds trust. What I love is also it expresses authenticity. So, you know, a lot of times we don't have the opportunity to talk about your value system um, you know, to the public or kind of an outward facing manner. So how do you do that through, you know, your volunteer work and are you promoting your volunteer work as you should? Um, I'm very, very passionate about the LGBTQ community. How can you, how can I express that through, through some sort of uh, personal brand effort, whether it be someone I worked with uh, on my, you know, showing that up on, showing up on uh, kind of my resume, just making sure that that's, that's all kind of expressed authentically. And it needs, and it's essentially your compass in getting to, getting you to where you need to be. Like you should always have a call to action or a north star of like what you want to get out of this journey of who you are, as a personal brand. And just to give you an example of how I've been able to achieve, you know, teaching as an adjunct faculty member, I sold my story. I was on a bit of a roadshow telling everybody and kind of, and they introduced me to different people. Hey, this is my story, you know. Um, I'm a marginalized uh, first generation gay Latino who wants to give back. And so a lot of people connected with that story, with that journey. And then they eventually opened up the door of an opportunity for me to step into again. And that wouldn't have happened if I, um, if I didn't do that, at least I, I didn't have kind of this, this end goal in mind. So that should always be part of your personal brand. Mm -hmm. I'll do a few of these. I always feel like to kind of exercise your muscle of personal brand, um, of course, use the chat. You know, how do these people show up to the world? So all these people similar to us all, you don't have to be a celebrity to have a personal brand. But in this case, give me some attributes uh, as you think about these folks like Oprah Winfrey. Feel free to shout an answer or put it into the chat. Give me some Give me some adjectives or what do you all think of when, when you think of Oprah Winfrey? Self-made. Self-made. I love that. Yes. Groundbreaking. Powerful. Artic Very articulate. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, so all those are wonderful, wonderful, um, you know, perceptions, right? Like I agree hundred percent with each of you know, everyone that have, uh, has stated what they thought of Oprah Winfrey and that's all built over years and years of, of building credibility. Uh, and so through her actions and how she shows up, you know, uh, someone threw out the word articulate. Yes. But and that is a perception that's formed because of all that you've seen her do out in the public. Elon Musk, give me a few adjectives for him. <laughs> Pompous. <laughs> okay. Egotistical. Yeah, I think. Okay, Influential, yeah. someone's saying. Ultra intelligent. Ultra intelligent, yes. Innovator. So, yeah. yeah, that's kind of a yin yang, right? Like it, it, there's definitely some good and bad. So again, not everything's going to be pleasant, but he's been a very successful businessman very inspirational to some, but it comes with some negative, some, 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 some negative associations. Right. So again, not everything is, you know, um, uh, what I call like bluebirds and cotton candy, right? Like there's always going to be some sort of, um, and I won't go through, I, it, you kind of catch my drift here as far as, um, of how we do this exercise, just to show you the importance of why personal brands are so important. Um, all right, so this is a bit of an exercise. Um, what I want you to start thinking about, I'll give you five minutes um, just so that you can start exercising your this muscle here, uh, or at least thinking about how you show up. I want you to think of your top to two to three, I'd say components of what, or adjectives that make up the different um, dimensions here. So I'll give you th I'll give you five minutes. And, and you when you think about, like, I'll give you the example of your authentic self. What does that even mean? And there's no right or wrong answer for this. It's start thinking about who is, how do you want to show up as a personal brand to your, you know, um, symbolizing your authentic self. And then same thing with values and priorities. It kind of lists out your two to three, your passions, your skill sets and expertise and personal and professional goals. And then kind of in conjunction with that, do you want that to be part of your personal brand? And if not, and it's okay if you don't, it's just now then being kind of taking the extra step to say, yes, I think this is important for me to show up how I show up into the world. So I'll give you, in this case, I'll give you, um, I'll give you, yeah, four, four minutes. How's that? And feel free to ask questions along the way if you all want me to elaborate on anything as others are, are jutting that down. So we'll give you all till I'll say 1132 according to my watch and I always like to play some sort of jazzy music or something to kind of get your your brain cells working or to help inspire you we don't have that today so you'll have to play the jazz music in your head for now <laughs> And sometimes it's uncomfortable, right? Like to think about this and it forces you to think, you know, what, what, what do I value? Or if you think you have a lot of values and priorities, it forces you to, you know, well, it forces you to rank them because you, we all have many values and priorities. So this exercise gets you to think, uh, you know, how to prioritize that. Again, this is not going to be shared with anybody. It's just more so for you to, to get to, to start thinking about these kind of things. We're going to go ahead and keep moving forward just because I want to get through everything here. Uh, again, you can always pick it up after the workshop session here. Um, so with all that being said, kind of this is my next ex exercise. I, I, I told you, you're going to be uh, having to work in this session. So, but it's, it's kind of what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. So, so a personal brand slogan is essentially similar to what you would see kind of with a detergent or any type of, you know, Nike, just do it type of thing. You should always have something uh, that could help motivate you, that could help drive direction for you, is a catchy phrase that says something about you that matters most and what makes you unique. So what differentiates you from everybody else? It's usually two to four sentences, and it really sums up what you do and what you stand for. So for those that are interested or those that are willing to participate, I'd love for you to take, and, this, and, not, and not to take five minutes, but maybe take the next one minute 
uh, if you only can describe yourself in five words or in a slogan, what would they be? And then in the chat box, type in what those would be and choose wisely. So we'll take the next minute to do that. If you all want to participate in, in uh, kind of this slogan exercise, you don't have to think through it too much, but um, feel free to do that now just to kind of get, get creative minds sharing their thoughts. And uh, Greg or Denise, do you mind maybe reading off some of those? I'm just, I see that there's some. Um, career doctor, edutainer, passionate, theatrical, authentic, empowering. I love professional, it. Professional, strong, I have strong research skills, a subject matter expert, industry certified, uh, value, um, I think autonomy and family. Well, Lynn, you need to present for us. You're a subject matter expert and you're industry certified. I think you're just volunteered for the next webinar. Um, <laughs> someone with a little humor and some heart, I can change the world one person at a time. I love that. Oh, that's great. That's Ooh. like, that's Ooh, Kimberly, this is good. Creative maximizer, ready to take projects to the next level. That's amazing. Yeah, those are all really great. So think about that the next time you, uh, you know, as you start thinking about like, treat yourself as, I know it's, it's, it's weird to think about yourself this way, but uh, kind of something that you're looking to sell. I mean, you're literally selling yourself. So uh, it really forces you to think, you know, come up with something catchy again, as a little bit of a, of, of a motivator uh, and a reminder, something you can write on your desk or something you can post on your fridge to kind of keep you going, to really kind of bring you back to, uh, to your personal brand slogan. So first impressions. So we're going to go now into first impressions and what that means. We all know this means so much in the world of uh, recruiting and job placement. This is, this is, you know, part of what we, we do uh, kind of all being as a hiring, you know, as what, whether it be it's a, a hiring manager or someone that helps others get hired. Um, it's just so, so important just to kind of drive that point home. According to psychology today, it takes a mere seven seconds to make a first impression, whatever that is, at least uh, that's uh, kind of the, the average. And according to the New York Post, a study among 2000 Americans examining the art of first impressions found that seven in 10 Americans, about 70% form a first impression of somebody before they even speak. So talk about you know, nonverbal, talk about physical appearances, again, people, make their own perception based on their own biases, based on their, their own experiences, their background. And you never have a, a second chance to have a first impression. So that's always something that's boggled my mind, right? So you have to kind of make sure you do it well the first time and how you want to show up and, and have it set you apart. You know, again, authenticity is something is, I can, I can, you know, stand on that soapbox um, forever, but you staying true and staying authentic. And then because nonverbal is so important, it's probably as important, if not more important than some of the verbal side, but you know, making sure that eye contact is there, posture, you know, handshaking, you know, things like even like the, the firmness of your handshake can go a long way or, or not, you know, can probably miss the mark. And uh, I've been in interviews where that hasn't happened, where you don't have a firm handshake or someone slouching. Again, unfortunately, we make first impressions that our perceptions begin to form just with the nonverbal. All right, so I'm gonna open it up uh, to, maybe this is too much to put into the chat, but um, what do you think, expanding on your slogan, what do you think is an elevator speech? You hear about it, you know, what, what is it? Anybody wanna speak on behalf of that? Telling about yourself within a short amount of time. Yeah, exactly. Any anybody else have any thoughts to that? Yeah, yeah. It's really selling that thirty seconds, getting across what you have to offer and why people need you. Yeah, exactly. So, and you're you're selling yourself as you would be selling, you know, anything else. So, it's really thirty to sixty seconds, depending on the context, on how you demonstrate your professional attitude, strengths, and skills. And they're essentially talking points about yourself to be utilized in multiple situations. So I've used my elevator speech in so many different ways, uh, depending on who my audience is in a networking event, 
or, you know, you know, I teach at, at, at numerous universities. So I have my elevator speech for day one. Uh, you can use this for job interviews or course, like I mentioned, course introductions or kind of to the famous question, and this happens everywhere, whether it be professionally or per, uh, personally, is tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, and then for networking events, it, it works you know, wonderfully well. So constructing your elevator speech, these are a few points uh, that you should keep in mind. It should not be more than 60 seconds uh, and it shifts with your environment and your objective. Uh, so if your objective is to find a job, that's gonna be more honing in on your skills and um, your, your uh, attributes to kind of fit into that job that you're looking for. You should always know your audience to be able to then twist uh, and shift um, the dialogue and it describes who you are and what you do. So um, just keep that in mind. That is um, an element of that. And for, because it's such a little amount of, amount of time is you wanna be somewhat general, not too specific, unless someone ask you, someone is asking you a follow-up a follow-up question. That's when you can be a little more specific uh, and be very distinctive. Like, uh, you know, what makes you uh, unique from the rest. And you always want to end what you're looking for. So if you were at a career fair, you always want to go into uh, kind of your selling point, kind of like, what are the next steps? Like you want to keep it very open-ended or, hey, now that we've met, could we do a follow-up coffee chat? Or could I do an information, you know, can, can we, can we uh, participate in an informational interview? That kind of thing. And it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So a lot of times you feel like you need to squeeze so much into um, one 60 second spiel about yourself. Again, it's like just that's, that should be the entry point, but it's what I call a marathon. So it will take time for you to build networks, uh, for you to kind of get to where you wanna be. The, the, uh, I consider your elevator speech almost like a, tr a movie trailer uh, to kind of what you can present or what you can give to this other party. And then practice, practice, practice. Um, sometimes we get, it's a little awkward to practice in front of a mirror, but it's probably the best thing I've, that I've ever done. Uh, or practice with a friend or a spouse. Uh, that's always a lot of fun too. <laughs> All right, any questions be before we jump into another exercise here? All right. Okay. So, so, so here's uh, an engagement prompt. So I want you to take five minutes to write an outline of a rough version of your elevator speech. So this is the scenario. So you're all at a networking event with a small group of individuals that are all meeting for the first time. So you don't know anyone and your objective is to make connections with as many individuals as possible for a possible professional, personal collaboration, whatever that is. Uh, I'm not going to randomly place you in any breakout rooms. I just want you to take the next five minutes to, uh, to do that. So we'll give you, it's 1140, so 1145. Uh, we'll give you some time to kind of write up an outline. It doesn't have to be the entire uh, elevator speech. Okay, I promise jazz music, you're gonna get jazz music. All right. So I wanted to um, do a little bit of a debrief. Let me uh, stop sharing here. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to get some feedback um, in regards, before I go into my key takeaways, my first piece is um, my, my, I guess my, the, the first thing I want to ask you all, like, how did, how did these exercises feel? I, I just wanted to get kind of some candid feedback as you were going through a little bit of this self-discovery, anything that you all want to share, it's kind of open forum here. I'll share. Um, I'm Lisa. Hello, everyone. Um, it makes so. me a little nervous because I don't like talking about myself sometimes. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. you know, when it comes off as kind of cheesy. Like, <laughs> so, right, right. I don't know. It just kind of makes me feel nervous. But the fact that you said that we should practice and um, here, I'll just come on camera, that we should practice and so forth kind of makes me feel a little bit more comfortable when I'm uh, 
creating the, the elevator speech and presenting it, I should say. So. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's really, I mean, that is normal. I mean, not talking about yourself is uncomfortable. Uh, it may be like folks feel like they're, they feel it's a little cocky, right? Like feeling a little overly confident. So, you know, if it helps to kind of maybe work with another, you know, a quick point, um, pointer is like, maybe as you're developing these, ask people how they perceive you, like someone that's close to you, someone that you can lean on and say, Hey, what are some things like, how I, how, how am I as a personal brand? How am I coming off? And um, they can help you identify some, some key traits and, and kind of how you show up to the world. Uh, anybody else want to share kind of their Charlotte? Yes. What I realized in going through that elevator speech um, exercise is that we already have elevator speeches. We just don't realize it because yes. when I started to write it down, I thought about all the networking events, career fairs I go to. And the first thing employers want to say to me personally is, oh, well, hi, well, what is your role? And then you go into what your role is. And so mm -hmm. when I'm writing, I'm thinking, do you know how many times I've said this? So it's like, we already <laughs> have an elevator speech. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good point. So and then, and then you have the elevator speech, but then you can, it's all about refining it. And again, being comfortable with adjusting it, depending on who your, your, your audience is. And that's, a, I've been really good at being able to do that, really understanding what they, like, who my audience values, and then being able to tweak my elevator speech in that way. So great feedback. Anybody else have anything to share as they were going through? Denise? Yeah, um, well, it reminded me of a, of a workshop um, that I went to a few years ago and it was kind of, you know, it was in person and it was like, okay, write your elevator speech. And then everybody had to get up and walk around the room and then say it to people. And it was just awful. And, um, and, you know, it was just like, we weren't really even interacting. We were just regurgitating our, um, you know, what we're, what we had written down, but, and right. I, I think in real life, I mean, if I was, if I'm at a networking event, um, I'm asking questions of the other person first, you, mm -hmm. know, like, you know, like, like a human and then, uh, yeah, and, right. and then like Charlotte said, then we're, then we're talking about what we really do. And I think, um, I think that that makes more connections, but I could see where, you know, you want to get this and get it kind of ingrained. So you have a plan, but, yeah. um, yeah. I just had um, that flashback to that event. It gave me like anxiety. So. <laughs> yeah, when it happens during happy hour, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of people get liquid courage. But you know, having too many, too many, uh, too many cups of uh, your favorite cocktail um, can also be detrimental to the situation. Yeah, no. But uh, I mean, that's a really good point. It's not like you're going to go out there. You want it to come off genuine and. Uh, just because you have an elevator speech outline doesn't mean you're going to give it in 60 seconds or less. It's, it means you can use chunks of it throughout a conversation. And Denise, I'm with you. Like for me, it's about starting with the question and that prompts yet another question to you. And then you can, you own that, you own that, uh, that dialogue, you own that kind of the, the back and forth. So having that ingrained in your head just gives you talking points, essentially, um, yeah, Christina. Hi, everybody. I just want to say when we do our introductions, um, you know, one, of course, being genuine who you are and what I was teaching our, our students how to present themselves at job fairs and events, at the end of the day, are they going to remember you? Who are you? How you're presented? You walk away, are you going to remember Christina Lee tomorrow? Um, mm -hmm. If you left that impression, you have built your brand and who you are. Um, mm -hmm. The other point is, really, it's the other person. It's not about you when you're presenting. You want to hear them. So when they understand this is for you, this is why I talk to you, Sergio. This is why I talk to you, Anthony. This is why I talk to you, Greg. Um, that's personal touch is what you leave with, and you leave it with them. And um, anyways, that's just the extras I've done um, with my students. And just mm -hmm. like at the end, does an employer, they meet thousands of people at the job fair, but the next day you call them, you're going to go, who are you? Or like, oh yeah, yeah, you're that person that I just met because you right. asked questions about me, you know? Um, it's anyways, about making those, everybody yeah, it's about has making their them. style. 
and their yeah. genuine style and everybody just has their genuine style and that makes them who they are. Yeah, that's a, a great add on. Thank you, Christina. Anthony, you have something to say? Yeah, I was just going to say, because I've taught this to many different people, and, and the last audience that I taught this to was veterans. And so trying to help them really make the shift is really an uh, adjustment because they're trying to figure out what did I do for all those 10, 15 plus years? What did I do? How do I communicate this? And so really helping them fine tune it and really put the bells and whistles on it, because even though I've teaching this and then when you're put on the spot it's like well let me go back and take time for me let me refine mine how does mine sound and so it really just put me in that headspace and one thing I would say also that did help our vets was actually role-playing it with them and actually interrupting them as they were delivering it so I thank you for this activity because because a lot of times when we were on the go so much we really need to tap in to always as I say, have it on a turntable, mm -hmm. spinning very slowly and always fine tuning it. So that way, anytime that the opportunity presents itself for you to deliver it, you know it. And then if someone interrupts you 15 seconds in, you're like, okay, I know exactly where I stopped. Let me answer this question and then pick right back up where you left off. So it's an right. always, it, it, it's something that's always being fine tuned always. Absolutely. Great add-ons, great add-ons. And and the first hurdle is like, is what um, I think Lisa had brought up is knocking down the insecurity of talking about yourself and accepting the fact that that's just the way it is. And that's the way people get to know you. So kind of that's why it's multidimensional. It's about your elevator speech, but it's, it's also about, you know, how you show up, whether on social media or the internet. And so um that is something that unfortunately it's, you know, it could be cultural. It could be how we grew up. You know, I tend, I was much of an introvert and I lacked self-confidence and it's in, you know, it's not easy to kind of climb that hill. So that's the first roadblock for many is to kind of break that wall of like, it's okay to talk about yourself and other wonderful things. It doesn't make you a cocky person. Uh, it makes you someone that's confident and someone that knows what their skill sets are. And that's what we do every day, uh, you know, as hiring managers, as we place others in, in roles as well. So I want to leave you off with uh, some quick, uh, let me share my screen again. I, I do like to have key takeaway slides just so that if you didn't, mem if you didn't learn anything today, uh, I want you at least to keep this in mind, which is. Uh, dive into your Ikigai. So your life purpose, if you haven't used Ikigai, I encourage you to kind of start looking at that concept. It was a, a bit of an enlightening moment when I was able to use that framework or use a framework that's worked for you. Um, the second point is perception is reality. So be deliberate and monitor, you know, I'll highlight monitor as to how you show up in the world. Always stay authentic to yourself and who you are as an individual is only going to make you a better leader, a better professional, a better friend. And always have your personal brand slogan or elevator speech ready to go and shift it depending on your environment and objective. And last but not least uh, is uh, to practice, practice, practice. So um, so I thank you for your time. I'm, I'll stick around for the next five minutes or so for any questions. But if you all want to connect with me, I'm happy to, um, to build a network with you all. I, you can find me on LinkedIn, Sergio Baez, or here's my email address, um, sergiobaez at ca.rr.com. So with five minutes left, I'm happy to hand it over to Greg and Denise, or I, I'll open it yeah. up to questions as well. Yeah, questions. So Sergio, the first one people are asking for the PowerPoint, can you send it to me and we can post it on our website? Yes, we can do that. Awesome. So we're recording this. We'll do some editing um, probably middle of next week. It will be up on the website at the, um, the calplacement.org um, website, and we'll have the PowerPoint there so you can listen to this again because there is a lot of great info in there along with the PowerPoint as well. So the, you should be getting a survey as well. Everyone that attended, we'd love your feedback on today and kind of Sergio and what you'd love to see in advance um, for future webinars. I'm gonna share screen real fast because hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, 
I enjoy the Sergio. You're great. Um, state conference is coming up. It's been more of this two days. It's virtual. We did it virtual last year. We had like 150 people attend. We gave away like over two or three hundred dollars worth of raffle prizes. We have music going. It's a good two days um, with lunch breaks and breaks in between bathroom breaks. Tons of good topics. Love to have you there. It's only fifty dollars. So we um, feel free to register now. And as we get, um, we're looking for speakers. If you'd love to speak, if and then we're updating the website with our speakers as they're coming in, and we're confirming them. So. We would love to have you at our state conference and the next webinar in two weeks as well. Great, and just a, just a quick uh, note here. I did include my LinkedIn profile, uh, the link to my LinkedIn profile in the chat. If you all wanna just click on that, I'm happy to, to have you part of my network. Questions, clarifications for Sergio. You dazzled him. <laughs> i know it's about that time it's about that time where everybody's you know stomach is growling and you got you got to get, get your extra cup of coffee if you haven't already so hopefully, hopefully um, Serge, i just had a quick question so what is it that you do i try to uh, connect with you there's no picture there so i couldn't tell it was you but thank you for the link um so what is it that you do as a global partnership lead yeah, great question. So um, for the Walt Disney Company, I'm in charge of global partnerships for the Walt Disney Company for licensing and global promote uh, global promotion. So for instance, um, working on the next theatrical release for Disney and bringing in partners, uh, you know, some of the partners that I that I help manage are like P&G, Kimberly Clark's, if you've seen any diapers out there with Mickey Mouse or pull ups with a kind of a I don't know, a Toy Story character. Um, I'm behind the scenes uh, working on all the strategy, a character strategy and any type of marketing that goes along with it. Um, if you all have any pets, Chewy.com was also a deal that I, that I uh, and a partnership that I've put together where you bring in kind of the, the intellectual property and all the, the great characters Disney has within their vault and bringing them to a partner to then develop toys or develop any type of product uh, so that's my world. It's a, it's a lot of fun because you get to think like a kid every day. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I am transitioning off of this role, but um, I will be going into, an, uh, you know, I'll be teaching, but then I'll also go into another studio. I think that's news for my friends at CPA. So I am going to another studio to do the same thing. Um, so a little bit of a promotion, but I'm sure you've heard this studio uh, and some of the things that they've been working on, such as... Uh, like a Jurassic Park kind of thing. So that's that's where I'm heading. Congratulations, sir. Yeah, thank you. Your personal brand must be working. I mean, you're leaving Disney to go on yeah. your own. You're already getting, that's like not even a done deal and you're already getting spooked <laughs> by someone else, so. Yeah, so it's exciting stuff. And I love to teach. So if there's anything I can do to help you all uh, even be a soundboard, I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was really cool. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the seminar, the web. Yeah, of course. Anytime. That's great. Thank you. We want to thank you all for coming. So we love having you here. We'll do this again probably in two weeks. I'm going to keep it a surprise who's going to present next. Um, but go register now. Register for the next four or five. That way you'll get them and you'll, you know, you'll get the reminders and know who's coming up in the future. So we always appreciate having you here. Sergio knocked it out of the park. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lisa Bravia and I work with the Merced County Office of Education and I'm a proud member of California Placement Association. Hi, my name is Greg Friedman. I work with Merced County Office of Education. I'm a proud member of the CPA Northern Region. Hi, my name is Denise Crawford and I work at Bakersfield College and I'm a proud member of the California Placement Association Central Region. Hi, I'm Rosalinda Rivas and I'm a proud member of the California Placement Association.